You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zen Tech Consultant. I am Jim, your obnoxious yet still strangely entertaining host, and with me, as always, is my partner. It's Rocco. It's Rocco. He is obnoxious but not entertaining, which is why I make him suffer through the engineering joke of the week. Okay, Rocco, quick one today. You ready? I'm ready. Why was the computer engineer late for dinner? Why? Because he had a hard drive home. Huh? Oh, oh, good Lord. God. You oh, you think God. I can't make them any worse. <laughs> All right, folks. We have a favorite guest of ours back on the show today. Todd Rogers from Walter P. Moore is back on the podcast. And Todd is the BIM manager at Walter P. Moore, and he also sits on the board of directors for Augie, and he is one of the editors for Augie World Magazine. So, Todd, thanks so much for being back on the show today. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Missed you guys. It's has. been a while. It has. It's, it been, has a, been. it's been a hot minute, but we are so happy to have you back. You're always a pleasure. So, awesome. yeah, for those of you who don't know, I mean, Todd has been on the show a bunch of times. Uh, but for new listeners, let's uh, let's take a break here and just get a quick little bit of, of learning about Todd. So, Todd, why don't you tell everybody, you know, who you are and what you do and what kind of things you focus on over at Walter P. Moore? Well, I have surpassed my 30-year mark in the industry. Um, you know, I worked 16 years in production and moved over to the Autodesk reseller side for about 10 years. And everybody started getting eat up by the larger um resellers so i figured it was time to jump ship and jump back into the production landed at walter p moore and i've been at walter p moore be six years this march and i really like it there great company to work for great people to be around um yeah so got other news in my life um i you know my wife plays football and I ended up this past September owning a football team here in Houston and the league itself. Really? So, yes, wow. sir. And you haven't invited us out to the games yet. I'm heartbroken. Games, the season will start April 27th. That's awesome. What What's the league? The United States Premier Women's Football League. That is fantastic. I have to look yeah. that up online. Now I'm, now I'm impressed as hell. Yeah. yeah, that's the fantastic. USPWFL. I love that. <laughs> I, am, I am a huge, huge fan, believe it or not, of football awesome. in general, but women's football. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's great stuff. Awesome. I, I have yeah, more fun watching that than I'm watching the game. right now was, it would be uh, Cincinnati. We got a team in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Sizzle. That's so cool. Didn't yeah. even know that. I love when I learn new stuff. That's very cool stuff. So, all right. So you all should just check out and, and, and look for that on the website. See what they're on. Support Todd and his wife. Yes. So good yes. stuff. <laughs> all right, folks. So today we are, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence or AI uh, in the design world and where it can fit into your daily workflows and the potential benefits that it promises. Um, now, I am going to be fair here and say that, you know, Todd and I, well, <laughs> we don't necessarily agree on this particular topic. Um, you know, regular listeners to the show know that I am just not a fan of AI. Um, I don't think it's actually intelligent. I think it suffers very badly from generation loss. Uh, and I have no faith at all in any of the data that it formats or provides. Uh, Todd, on the other hand, has been delving into it, you know, a good bit more than I have. So I actually want to hear his opinions on the overall AI systems out there and kind of give you guys a chance to get a, a positive view here instead of my, you know, grumpy old man who distrusts all these new fangle gadget BS. So, um, so, so Todd, you know, what, what are the big AI systems that you've tried out and, and kind of what's the difference between them? So it's funny you mentioned your uh, anti-AI, um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, seeing a ghost for the first time, right? Everybody's skeptical until they see a ghost, right? Uh, I'm the same way. I was very skeptical AI. I have been since day one until um, just a few weeks ago. 
Um, but I've been playing around a little with Google Gemini, which is all over the news as of late. <laughs> uh, Microsoft Copilot, and of course, Chat GTP. Um, now, the main differences in the two are Google Gemini, eh, Microsoft Copilot, eh, Chat GTP. Okay. All right, so there's two versions of chat GPT. So there's the free version, which is version 3.5, which will give you simple things like, hey, write me a list routine for this, okay? And it does its best. Sometimes you have to tweak it or, you know, not even use it because it won't work. Uh, but there is the other version, the 4.0, which we can get into uh, later in this podcast. Okay, cool. All right, so... You look, even a skeptic like me, right? you know, like I was just saying, right? I know, even I know the king of the world, you know, the AI world is ChatGPT. Um, and that's from OpenAI. Um, you know, and, and I am not <laughs> going to get into the questions about its ownership and its founders and some of their legal and questionable things. Uh, but it's, it is the most commonly used system out there at the moment. Um, so, so Todd, tell, tell us about ChatGPT in particular, right? And, and how have you found it useful for you in, in the design build space? So what I've found is, again, 3.5 is just your basic AI stuff. However, if you wanted to go a month without Netflix and buy it for 20 bucks, there is a little paper clip that appears in the um, question box. So that paper clip <laughs> will <back>? allow you. <laughs> yeah. So that paper clip will actually allow you to upload documents to the platform. So we tested, um, well, actually we had a presentation by Edmundo Herrera. I don't know if you know Edmundo that works for Autodesk, but he is a fabulous presenter. He's very passionate about everything. He gets your attention immediately and holds it for the whole time. Great, great guy. Well, he recently moved to Texas and he's not far from me. And I had him come by the office and show us some stuff. And what we saw was Edmundo uploaded the Ashto standards manual to the platform and started asking it questions. Now, the kicker is, you know, you can ask it questions all day long, but you've got to be kind of specific in certain questions to get the right answer generated for you. You know, for example, um, you would ask it, okay, so what formula do you use when calculating super elevation? And lo and behold, it spits it all out right there for you and go back and check it in the manual and boom, it's there. It's pretty amazing. So it, it's a good thing. You, you actually hit on one thing that, that's always very much concerned me uh, about AI, particularly in the engineering and design space. Um, the, the thing is, if you ever read carefully into their, any of the, it doesn't matter which system it is, but any of the AI platforms, any data that you upload into that system belongs in perpetuity to the AI and it can be used and distributed and repackaged and rebundled for use, which is another thing that I have a concern with, right? Your designs, your engineering work is now part of the public domain. Well, that's it's not part, it's part of chat GPT's good, domain. Good that you mentioned that, yeah. Uh, we actually had a discussion about that, you know, if we, you know, we discussed, hey, what if we were to take our uh, city of Houston manual, upload it in there, take one of our drawings, upload it in there and check for drawing standards and, and company standards. If we're withhold, if we're, um, you know, doing it per city of Houston standards. Right. And there you have it. Once our drawings uploaded in there, it's kind of theirs now. Yeah, that for them to use that that that's a concern there that you know you're you're really that just turning over your rights to anything you create to these you know, right. AI developers that that scares me. Yeah, not comfortable. That, that, with that scares me too. That is a big concern. Yeah, no doubt. So so Rocco, let's wake you up over there. So in in terms of the clients that you've been talking to, um, it, it is AI a big discussion point yet? You know, are there you know people out there who are lack actively actively try it in, in English actively trying to integrate it into their design build process? Uh, it's not really part of our daily conversations, but, you know, I, I, 
I laugh sometimes when you you, you get a, a sales call out of the blue and it's like, yeah, I'm looking for, um, you know, I, 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 I'm just getting into the field or I'm a developer and I'm looking to be able to design a, a full site and, you know, elevations and grading and so on. Do, do, do you have a software technology that does that? <laughs> it's like, a, I, I call them the wannabes, you know? It's like, really? Like, are you looking to replace Jim and Todd here? Yep. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what they're looking to do. So uh, that's, that, that, is, that is actually, we've had a few of those calls. You have an AI, can you develop an AI that literally does everything I ever wanted to do without me even having to think about it? Sure, yeah, not, not a problem. Um, so look, you know, what, one of the things that I, that I have read uh, about a lot, and it's kind of what Ty was talking about earlier, it's the difference between versions of AI, right? And it, it's such an emerging and fast growing tech that it seems like there is an update every 12 hours sometimes. Uh, but you know, the, the, the investment in time and development by the tech world, and even at this point, even the AI itself in some cases, which is kind of upgrading its own code, which is a little frightening. Um, it, it's driving some pretty extensive capability differences between those major releases, right? And Todd, you, you were talking before about the differences between uh, ChatGTP 3.5 and the latest 4.0. What, what do you see as the big differences there? So the big difference is the 4.0 version does do analysis, right? 3.5 does not. There's no analysis whatsoever. It's just go find information out there and put it together in a form that you can use. 4.0 actually will do analysis for you in the background. So, you know, again, being skeptical, you, know, you want to go check those things. So you run it and you go check it. Hmm, that's actually right or very, very, very close. So uh, that's the big major difference in, in the two platforms. Okay, and that is an important thing, particularly in this in this world. If you're gonna go that route, you're definitely gonna need the analysis stuff. But I'm, gl I'm glad to hear you're being very careful and testing it. That's always always a smart way you to go. You gotta be, man. I, I gotta keep my job. <laughs> now, I'm saying, they're already trying to replace us. If we start making big mistakes like that, we're in big trouble. So, all right, folks, let's take a quick break to hear from today's sponsor. And when we get back, I want to talk with Todd uh, kind of about the practical process of using AI tools in the design and build world. So stick around. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. Hey, everybody, it's Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. And I want to talk to you guys today about our new Zenpipe for civil 3D pressure networks. Look, the, the Civil 3D pressure pipe system is a powerful tool set, but anybody who's ever used it is gonna tell you the same three things. One, it needs more pipes and fittings and tools to use in the real world. Two, those parts need to be much easier to work with and label. And three, nobody has the time or energy to build custom pressure pipe parts on their own. And that's why we've developed Zenpipe for Civil 3D Pressure Networks. All right, it's a catalog of over 600 plus pipes, fittings, appurtenances, and everything you need to intelligently design and label and work with your pressure network. So Rocco, tell folks how they can find out more about our Zenpipe tools. Yeah, hit up our website at zentechconsultants.net. That's Z-E-N-T-E-K consultants.net. Give us a call at 866-824-4459 or even drop us an email at sales at zentechconsultants.net. There you go, Zenpipe for Civil 3D Pressure Networks. If you work in the civil site world, you need this tool. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. We're talking with Todd Rogers of Walter P. Moore about AI today. Um, look, I'm not convinced this AI invasion works the way that folks claim. Um, I really, I see it as an overly hyped marketing stance on machine learning, all right? And that there is no such thing as real AI yet. Um, and, and that concerns me greatly, right? Because machines can be really fast and they can adapt or learn from repeat, repeated processes. That's machine learning, but they can't think. Um, and, and the big issue I see here is that these AI systems are pulling information from random locations, right? And they're even pulling it from each other. So that if, if one of these systems, you know, uses a bad idea or improper data, or it makes a mistake, now they all have the potential to do the same thing. And, and the more times that mistake is made, the more these systems see that it's being used and the more likely it is for them to use it. And it just keeps propagating the same problem. Um, so, you know, Todd is here though, to speak on, on the other side of things and convince me that these AI tools are actually a good functional thing. 
Um, so, so Todd, what, what are your thoughts around my concerns, right? Do, do you find these AI, T, AI tools to be reliable for real world use and why? Yeah, so your concerns are very viable. I mean, I get it. I mean, I, those are my concerns as well. Um, reliable, that's that's another that's another day, right? So, um, you know, I've checked the the 4.0 against uh, what it spits out, and it's pretty much spot on. Um, now, let's take grading optimization for example, um, in Civil 3D. Uh, I've had several discussions with the guy that heads that up at uh, Autodesk, and I just don't trust it. I don't like it. I don't trust it. It never gives me the results that I want or I think that I want. It's always something different. Um, and there's no way of going about really changing that unless you actually just do the grading yourself, right? So And it does defeat the point of having a tool. It's exactly right. It defeats the point of having the tool. Yeah, you can set your parameters and your constraints and all that jazz, but then again, it's going to do what it wants to do, not what you want it to do. Yeah, and and that, that I think is, is, is the case. And that's that... I think you hit it dead on there, right? That that to my mind, that's the difference between you know what they like to call AI for marketing purposes and machine learning. The machine is going to work within the parameters you set, and it's going to give you the best mathematically accurate rendition it can. If you're doing pure math, that's great. But when you're doing something like grading, right, that is really much more of an art, and it takes a lot of decisions and, and changes of mind and, and looking at alternate processes. It, it, you get garbage. Uh, it, it just doesn't work out well. So that, like I said, that's what I mean when I say it's machine learning and not real AI. It's not as smart as a human. Um, so, you know, I, look, I have to assume, right, since we're still dealing with, you know, basic computing in these artificial intelligence systems, uh, yeah, that some of the basic laws of computer science are going to apply. And, and the big one that always comes to mind for me in these conversations is GIGO, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Um, you're, you're going to need to be able to define exactly what you need, right, in order for for these AIs to give you any kind of a rational answer. So the, the questions that you come up with and how you ask them are going to be really important, I think. So, you know, Todd, what types of questions should people looking to be asking in, in a platform like chat GPT, right? And how do they how do they need to be formatted and structured? Yeah, so uh, that's a very good uh, question because it, it's got to be very specific. Uh, you can't just say, uh, let's say we, we upload the uh, a design manual up there and we say, what's the minimum distance between manholes, right? Okay, so you got to be a little more specific in that question. Say, I have a pipe run that is such and such feet long. I would like to know the minimum distance between manholes per standard. You know, it's got to be more specific before, in order for it to spit out the correct response, right? Because I can ask it something a little bit differently and I might get a different result. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. It's all in how you have to approach it with a methodology of asking it. Um, let's say the format would be almost like you're you're writing some type of a uh, editorial or something, and you have to ask it a specific question. For example, this podcast, you're asking me a specific question. I'm giving you a specific answer, all right? So it's all about the formatting and how you ask it. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, and, and I get that. And, and it makes perfect sense. And, and it does. And it's another one of those things I think that concerns me a little bit about AI. Um, I, I think it because the salespeople, <laughs> Rocco, um, you know, the sales and marketing folks, they want to sell it to you. And they want you to buy in and use their product. And they tell you, oh, it's so easy, right? We can put anybody on it. But here's the thing. If I'm doing a design, I trust Todd to go in. Todd knows what he's doing, right? 30 plus years of doing this, he's going to ask the right question in the right way. When when I get Joe somebody who's been out of, you know, a community college for six months 
And he's asking a question. I'm not going to trust whatever response comes back because I don't trust that the, the the data going in was 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 rational. And that that's you know the kind of thing Ego. that yeah I, yeah. <laughs> and so you you still it's not this catch all be all end all tool that's going to just give anybody the correct answers, right? So that idea of like Greg, I was saying, can you eliminate you know you and I out of this, Todd? I don't I don't think you ever will. You still need to have an intelligent. Uh, you know, experienced person who understands what they're asking before you can get into any of this. So, right. and, and that's what I mean. That's in my mind. That's, it, that's machine learning. It's, it's. A, I'm not blasting the tech. I love the tech. It's just that I, I. I think it's. It's a tool, just like you know, giving someone a skill saw. You don't hand a skill saw to a four year old. You know, that's it right. Doesn't doesn't end up doesn't end up well for anybody. <laughs> that's um, right. But you know. That's right. You give it to a trained carpenter. Well, now we've got a different story, right? Now you can really get a lot of production done. And that, that's what I want people to take away from this conversation, at least from my side. Um, so, so Rocco, let me kind of sum this right. We did an experiment with chat GPT about a year back when it first really hit big. Uh, and, and we asked it to write up a sales message, right? That we could email at the clients about one of our products. Um, what was the end result of that? And did we end up using it? Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you guys the real the real story here. <laughs> so so what happened is one of our sales guys decided to take Jim does a lot of the technical writing here at Zentech. So one of our guys decided to take what Jim wrote and run it through Chat GPT. <clears throat> well, <laughs> when that result came out, <laughs> I thought I thought Jim was going to flip a lid. <laughs> I did just have just about have a stroke. I'm like, what? This isn't even English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it took. You know, to your point, Jim, you have to know what you're. You know what you're talking about, what you're, what you're doing. You can't hand a saw to a four year old, and, um, you know, it it, it took the 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 message and it it completely translated it and made it five times more wordy than it needed to be. And uh, could it have worked? I I guess, but, you know, let's just say there was a huge difference between what Jim wrote and what chat GPT wrote. Yep. And yep. Uh, we didn't use that message. No, I just, I mean, just, I mean, the first thing I said, I mean, this just sounds, this just screams Russian spam bot to me. That's what I'm reading here. So... <laughs> Oh, I tell you what. Okay. So I tell you, you know, corporations, I think that you really love the thought of AI uh, because it has the potential to dramatically reduce costs and to increase increase overall efficiencies. Um, and look, you know, this is not a political show, so I don't want to get into the discussions around, you know, the ethics of using AI to eliminate people without any kind of, you know, social safety nets or whatever. Um, but I want to talk about the general costs uh, and, and the potential savings here, right? Since most of the, the folks listening here are business folks, and you're going to want to look at this from that economic standpoint. Um, so, so, Todd, what's the cost of using an AI system, and, and what type of savings have you seen, or, or do you expect to see? Well, it's twenty dollars a month for 4.0, which is not a deal breaker, right? What kind of savings could you have from that? You could save a ton of money in, well, let's say you could save a ton of money if the data is correct, right? But being in the engineering world and being engineering-minded, you're going to want to go check it, right? So you're going to spend the $20 a month. You're going to think you're saving, but you're going to start going over all this data with a fine-tooth comb, right? So you're doing what you should have done in the beginning, which is just do it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, if more people start using it and trusting it and it's working, yay, that's that's a big savings, you know, but how far away is that? You know, is it next week? Is it 10 years from now? Is it next year? I mean, when are we going to expect to trust it 100% and if ever? Right. And, and I think that's a great a great point and it's a great question, right? Because you think, of, like you said, in terms of analysis, if you're doing a structural analysis for a bridge, you can run it through the AI and it comes back and says, hey, this is perfect. It's fantastic. Today, will you trust that? 
No, absolutely not. You're going to go in, you're going to manually check it and, and verify. And yep. eventually, right, we will get to a point where it's like, hey, it's good enough. It does such a great job. We can trust it and people are going to stop checking it. And it'll work perfectly until it doesn't. At which point, what happens? <laughs> Bridges start collapsing. People start dying. <laughs> and yes. there's nobody to hold responsible. It's like, well, you know, the computer said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think... They're going to house AI in prison. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The AI in prison. What do we call that? We call that uh, <laughs> Autodesk. <clears throat> no, sorry. That was <laughs> sorry. That was me. Um, so, <laughs> all right, I'll be nice. So, all right, folks. You know, as always, I, I kind of like to let our guests round out the show uh, by telling uh, something about today's topic that I didn't think to ask. Um, so, Todd, what about it? What else do you think is important for our listeners to know or, or consider about, you know, using AI in their daily project work? Well, what I would do is I would just start, you know, testing it, uh, basically. So, you know, take a good uh, manual of some sort, like the Ashto standards manual, or I got, I got one for you guys. Take the national CAD standards and upload it. Yeah, that would be something to test. I haven't tested that one yet. I just thought of that. Hmm. So when you get that uploaded, start asking it different iterations of the same question to see what results you get, to see what comes the closest. And that would give you an idea of how uh, to start asking it the correct questions, right? Or in the right formats. Um, you know, I, and I gotta say, Jim, I'm 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 still on your side with with a lot of the skepticism of it. I'm just open a little more, as uh, I've seen a great presentation on it. But again, we all know about the smoke and mirrors, right? <laughs> Always. Yes, the smoke and mirrors are fantastic until you go back to your desk and start doing it yourself, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like. What the hell did I just see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's been a lot of my adult life here. See, that was a lot of smoke and mirrors yeah, in that. That is so. That is and you get back and try to do the work, right and you're pretty ticked off. Going, that is not what you told me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Too funny. Yep. That is a uh, that is a uh, a lot of. When I was with the reseller, that's that's a lot of what I did. And when I got back into production, I was like. Why did I do that to so many people? <laughs> yeah. I, I will say it, it. It's, you know, when you're trying to make sales and you got bills to pay, it's a seductive, right. easy route. But we, we, we work. Right. We, we try. We do. I can't say we've never glossed over some rough spots. <laughs> can't say we've never done that. But we do try hard here at Zenda to, to right. not do that. But, you know, there's well, those things. You know, say, what no. always gives me faith in that are the Bartles brothers. The Bartles brothers are just downright honest about everything and just from the get-go you get what it is what it's going to do and what it's not going to do and, and in the long run it's, it's really just from general business and day-to-day and -day living it's such a, a better way to work yes most people will take hey yeah that's nah, not going to do that and you just if you tell them up front nope sorry can't make it do that it's not going to work the way you want maybe we can find some workarounds but no i can't just give you everything you want they That's accept right. that, and then when it goes that route, they know it, and they're okay, and they're not angry. But you give That's them all right. the smoke and mirrors, you BS them enough, and then they're going, you said it would work. Oh, well, I didn't yeah, say I it would just work. Spent thousands <laughs> of dollars. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, and then you just lost your client. So it's never, never <laughs> yeah, the right exactly. answer. Lost trust in those people right then and there. Yep. Absolutely. All right, folks. I think we're going to leave it there for today. Uh, but before we bounce out here, Todd, I just want to thank you one more time for being here. I appreciate you always taking the time to chat with us, my friend. Man, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, anytime you. you want me, just shoot me an email and I'll jump right back on and we'll discuss whatever is at, uh, at hand. Perfect. Right. Give me the plug out here. Tell me where to go to the website for your football team, man. Yeah. So if you want to check out our league, it is the United States Premier Women's Football League. And that is www.usp wfl.org and the team i own here in houston is the houston doom the we doom. are at houstondoom.com that's a great name they, yeah, now i'm gonna go check that out myself it's got a great logo too it's that's got a cool great stuff. logo awesome all <laughs> the right folks. season starts um 
April the 27th, so keep an eye out. We will be doing live streaming, so boom. Boom, there you go. Everybody visit the Doom, see what they're up to. That's right. Nice. All right, folks, we're going to get out of here. We'll catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net. Or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.